Hey everyone, welcome back to Wix Fix. I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create a multi-step form right in Wix. Now this tutorial does require a little bit of code, but as usual, I will be providing the code on our website, so the link will be in the description. But I still highly suggest you watch the rest of this video to learn how to set it up properly and learn what parts of the code needs to be changed for your own website. And I also would like to mention that this will work in both the classic editor and editor X. But let's go ahead and get started. For this tutorial, we're gonna be using something called a multi-state box. So in order to have access to the multi-state box, we actually need to turn on dev mode. So we're gonna come over here to dev mode and just turn this on real quick, just like that. And what we're gonna to want to do is go ahead and add a multi-state box onto our page. So we're gonna come over to add, go to interactive, go to multi-state boxes, and we're gonna just pull out a blank one onto our page, just like this. Now, another thing that we're gonna to have to do to prep this is actually create a database. So we're gonna come over to content manager. We're gonna create a collection. This one is going to be, let's just call this one my form just like that, and we'll go ahead and press create. Inside of this, we're gonna create a few fields. So this one, we'll make it a text input and we'll call this one name, just like that. We'll create another one. This one can be text as well. We'll call this one email. And last but not least, let's create one more. It's going to be a date field. And we'll call this one DOB for date of birth. So now we have our database set up. Now we can go ahead and go back to our page with this right here. And if you remembered in our content manager and our database we have set up, we had three different fields. So name, email, and date of birth. So what we're gonna wanna do is maybe create a state for each one of those. Now for your website, you might wanna have more fields on each step, but we're just gonna make a very simple version in today's video but we're gonna come over to add. We're gonna to go to input and let's just drag this one out onto our page, just like that. Let's also go ahead and add a button. So we'll come here, we'll just add this button right here and we'll say next, just like that, perfect. Next, let's go ahead and create another state for this multi-state box. We're gonna duplicate it. This one's gonna say, add your email, perfect. And then let's add one more state. So we'll duplicate this state. And on state three, we want to have a date field. So we're gonna come over to add, input, we'll come down to date and time, and we'll just grab one of these out and we'll just place it right here. And let's go ahead and remove the email field right here, just like that. Okay, so now let's go back over to state one and we're gonna want to add a data set to the page. So let's go ahead and add a content manager. We'll add content elements and we want to add a form data set to the page. Now what a form data set is, is it lets us submit data that the user inputs in fields like this to our database. So if we click on settings, we wanna make sure that the mode is set to write only. And we want to connect this to the my form database, just like that, perfect. And for this input field, let's go ahead and connect this to our my form data set. We want this to connect to the name, just like that. For state two, we want this one to connect to our email field that we set up. And then on state three, we want this date picker to connect to our DOB. Now also something I forgot to mention is for state two and three, I wanna have another button. So we're just gonna copy this and we're going to paste it here. This one is gonna say back this one is going to say submit. And we want to connect this one, the click action to submit, just like that. Okay. And let's go ahead and do that for state two here as well. We want next to come over here to the left or to the right. We want to copy it and paste it here. 
and this one is going to say back again. Perfect. Okay, so now we are completely set up and we are ready to start coding. So let's go ahead and bring up our code panel right here. The first thing that I would like to do is go ahead and name all of our elements. So what I'm gonna do is with the multi-state box selected, I'm gonna call this my state box, or you can call this whatever you want. For this input, we're gonna call this one input name. For this button, let's call it BTN started, just like that. Now let's go over to state two. We'll call this one input email. For this button for the back, we're gonna call this one BTN email back. And then we're just gonna call this one BTN email. Perfect. And let's go ahead and go over to state three. We're gonna call this one date picker. For this button, we're gonna call this one BTN save back. And we don't really need to name the submit button. So now we can actually open up this code panel. So let's go ahead. I want to bring this up a little bit. Just like that. Let's go ahead and get rid of all of these comment codes right here. In this on ready function, let's go ahead and create a variable. We'll call this one my multi state box or my multi-state, just like that. We're gonna have this equal to the multi-state box. So we're gonna say dollar sign W, and we're gonna say my state box. There we go. Underneath that, let's go ahead and grab the start button from state three, or state one, sorry. So we're gonna grab this one right here. We're gonna say dollar sign W, BTN started. Now we're going to say on click. We want something to happen. And we want to load next for the my multi state. Now, as of right now, you're gonna notice that this is red. However, that's just because we haven't created a function called load next, but we will here in a minute. And let's just go ahead and copy this down. And we'll say for this one, button email. Okay, so we're just gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and add a comment above here that says, next and let's go ahead and copy this code right here go below paste it and this one will be back so what we want to do is grab um, btn email back and we want to load back and then for this one we want to do btn save back and we again we want to load back perfect as you can see here load next and load back both have red lines under them so now we need to create a function for these load back and load next so underneath all of this code right here let's do load next so we're gonna say function load next. We're gonna say multi-state. Inside of here, we wanna create a constant. We're gonna call it states. And it's gonna equal multi-state states. Just like that. Below that, we're gonna say let current equal to multi-state 
dot current state. Well, that let's create another constant. It. We'll call it index current, and this is going to equal state dot find index. And with parentheses, it's going to be state equal to greater than. We're going to do enter, and it's going to be state dot id is double equal to current dot id. And this should be states, not state. Okay. Underneath that, we're going to say let index next equal to index current plus one. And we'll say let next equal to index next less than states dot length with a question mark and then states with straight brackets and we'll say index next dot ID with some colons and we'll have these two things right here. And then underneath that, we'll say go to state. And we'll say multi state, comma, next. And so as you can see right here, since we have a function for load next, load next up here, there's no longer a red line underneath it. However, we, we now have a red line here for this function, which we'll create in a minute. But let's go ahead and do load back first. So we'll do a quick comment. Then we'll basically do the same exact thing for load back. So let's go ahead and create a function. Function name is going to be load back. The parameter is going to be multi state again. Inside this function, we're going to have, let's just go ahead and copy this part of it and we'll paste it in here. Underneath that, we're going to say let index back equal index current minus one. Okay. Then we'll say let back equal to index back greater than or equal to zero with a question mark. And we'll say states dot or states straight brackets index back dot ID and we'll have a semicolon just like that and then right underneath that we're gonna go go to state and we'll run the function for multi-state and we'll say Great. Now underneath this, we're going to create another function for go to state. So we'll create a function, call it go to state. Parameters is going to be multi comma ID. And inside the function, we want to say if ID is not equal to this, 
then we want multi to change state to ID. Okay, so now we have no more red lines. And if I can just go ahead and press preview on the website, here we can say we have our name, we'll press next. Email will say fake email.com. And maybe we messed up on our name, so we'll go back. We can change it to Ryan S. Next, fake email. Next, date of birth. Let's just say the 1st of September and press submit. Now, if you want to, you could also have a success message here when you press submit as well. That would probably be recommended so the user knows that their information got submitted to the database. But if we come over to the content manager, go to collections and open up my form, we'll notice that Ryan S fake email and the date of birth that I put in is exactly the same. Now I know this was an oversimplification of it and your multi-step forms may be a little bit more complex, but that's how you do it. And that's basically gonna wrap it up for today's video. If you all did enjoy, please consider giving this video a like and consider subscribing for more Wix and Editor X content coming out really soon. Thank you all again, and I'll see you all in the next one.